Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all the praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashim, Rabchakwadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of the great millstone who were well. Peace, blessings, and salutations unto the old four elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Now, there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes that says, The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. This, this snake right here, every time he slithers, he always chokes himself. So, you know, we just dealt with the issue of, you know, going into um, the Edomites, you know, whether they're done away with or not. You know, he claims that the Herodians were the last family line of Edomites <laughs> that were left, and then they just so happened to vanish and disappear. Therefore, you know, there's no more distinctive, distinct ethnic Edomites, in which all the brothers and men of the Lord, the prophets, the apostles, all covered that. You should already know. Now, here's another example of how unlearned this guy truly is and like the elder apostles are saying this guy is very easy like if you ain't got no material you know nothing is coming to your mind on you know as far as what lesson you want to do he, he provides all the material you need <laughs> for a lesson it's too easy all right it's like uh playing the game on, on easy mode you know, you, you, you playing the game and it's so damn easy. You're just going from level to level. You're defeating boss after boss after boss to the point where you could just do a speed run. Well, that's how easy vocab is. He's very easy. And if you're, you know, if you're learned, if you study these scriptures and the spirit is working with you, you can see how easy he is. All right. So anyway, and what's uh you know, what shows that this guy also, you know, he's uh we refer to in the scriptures as the the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, was so in the Psalms the fifty eighth chapter. No matter how many times we res you know we make our response videos and actually break down the scriptures the right way after he breaks it down wrong, and he's subscribed to all of our videos so he's aware of. The teachings, the, the various video responses to his uh, lectures. It doesn't even matter. He's still going to, you know, harden his, his ears and act like, you know, we're not actually breaking, breaking it down the right way. He's going to continue to deceive the people that's listening to him. And that's hey, the Lord set him up in that in that in that role. That's his purpose. The Lord said the deceived and the deceivers are his. All right. We dealt with this topic months ago. And I believe he was uh I think he approached some some Israelite on the street, some brother, and this topic came up and we dealt with it then. And then we can't um forget that just three weeks ago we did some uh, a brother caught this guy admitting that the Greeks in the New Testament were Israelites. He literally, it came out of his mouth that then you had Jews who were living as the Greeks, who were uncircumcised, who believed they could eat all the pork. He said that. So he admitted that the Greeks in the New Testaments and the New Testament were Israelites. So that's why I had to start the, 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 the lesson by quoting that in Ecclesiastes. I believe it's the 10th chapter. This fool keeps swallowing up himself every time he speaks. And that should, you know, that topic in itself proves that the Gentiles in the New Testament <laughs> were Israelites. But he's going to continue to double down on his stance because, you know, he's the wicked. Okay. So let's, uh, you know, I know the elder apostles already did. Responses. Uh, this elder, uh, 
here, uh, Karate Zaba, the elder in uh, Baltimore, did his lesson. But I want to actually uh, respond to a passage, all right, which he's taken out of context and actually go into how when Paul says that, remember that you and you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That's only talking about Israelites who were called into the church after living like the Gentiles. They were living in the manner of the heathen. All right. They were being called out of darkness into the light. That's all that that's all he was basically saying. But let's uh, listen to vocab, a.k.a. Haman. Therefore, remember that one time you Gentiles, I'm establishing this really means Gentiles here. Some Hebrew Israelites try to say a Gentile is a scattered Israelite in a Gentile state of mind, meaning an ethnic Hebrew that is just being called a Gentile. That way they can make the passage not apply to non-Israelites because they think they are one. Oh, yeah. But only when it's convenient which we may be able to get to Romans passage. I have it on my list. I don't know if we're going to get to it. But I want the reason why I'm bringing you here is because what is the, f the phrase? It's a prepositional phrase that is right after the word Gentiles here, ladies and gentlemen. What's it say? Boy, wait, you're missing it. Yes, in the flesh. You see it? They're Gentiles in the flesh. Is this their state of mind? They're Gentiles in the flesh. Now, Hebrew Israelite, if you drag them here they'll act like they like this passage but they don't like it because when i bring it up they have this little psychological trick i'm so glad you wanted me to go there this is what i always get they do this it's a psychological trick and i i'll I, this i'm not saying you should do this because i'm you know it's a different situation i'll say really then why didn't you have a start here i'm well if you're so glad why didn't you i'm the one who brought the path you know they'll do this kind of thing but it says gentiles in the flesh some of them will say, yeah, that means they were uncircumcised. But right after it says, called the uncircumcision. It's describing them as Gentiles, saying they're uncircumcised, but it says they're Gentiles in the flesh. That means they're Gentiles according to their nationality, their ethnicity. Gentiles. And that's where you're wrong. That does not mean that. Now, let's go to uh, Ephesians 2. And 11, and I actually want to read it in the NLT so we can establish something right here. Ephesians 2, verse 11 in the NLT. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. So what is he saying here? That there was a point where you were considered outsiders. Why? Because not only were you not born in Judea, because you were scattered among the heathen, but you lived as an outsider. Remember, going back to the laws, there were uh, various laws that if you were to break, you were to be cut off from among the people. That soul shall be cut off from among thy people. So they had to live. They were they were considered as outsiders. All right. They they being among the practicing uh, Israelites, they would be considered uh, profane because they were living like the heathen. And like you admitted that there were Jews who were living like the heathen. They were living like Greeks. And there was a point in time when they were actually forced to leave their laws and live after the manner of the heathen. How many times do we bring that out in the history in the, in the book of Maccabees? How it was even unlawful to even confess that you were a Jew. And he always act like he does not uh recognize that but he 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 knows that that's in the history but he's the deaf adder that stop of her ear he's got to just continuously put 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 his poison out 
all right but what he's saying right here is no different than what he said to some of the other uh churches let's go to uh first corinthians the 12th chapter First Corinthians 12. And starting at verse 1, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Now, how do you go from being a, a physical Gentile in the flesh to just magically becoming of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, an Israelite. Uh, question. So you can <laughs> you can go from being a Gentile in the flesh to a literal seed of Israel. So you could just magically transform from a a, a natural heathen Gentile in the flesh to an actual Israelite. See, this is what replacement theology would have you believe. That's a that, that's a doctrine of the devil. But this right here is only saying what he said back in uh to, to the church of uh, Ephesus. All right. That you were in time past Gentiles in the flesh, meaning you were moving as the Gentiles do in the flesh. All right, carried away into dumb idols, even as you were led. What were they? What were they doing? They were worshiping idols. All right, whether it was Dionysus, or or Bacchus, Jupiter. All right, whatever the Greeks were worshiping. Now, um, let's go to another one. Because you'll even hear this devil, he'll mock us when he'll say that, you know, oh, the Israelites will say that there's, there's talking about an a, a Israelite in a Gentile state of mind. Well, do Apostle Paul ever mention being estranged in the mind in one of his epistles? Let's go. Let's go to one. This is uh, Galatians 1 verse, uh, I mean, not Galatians, Colossians 1 and verse 20. I'll start at 19. It says, For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated. All right, meaning you are out, you are on the outside, you are estranged, and enemies in your mind by what? By wicked works. Yet now have he reconciled. So these people at one point in time, they were alienated and they were enemies in their mind by wicked works, meaning they were doing abominable practices they were basically committing the, the the acts or the works of the flesh and which that's something that the gentiles do let's go from there let's go to uh let's go to romans 13 and 12. And it says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. As long as you're doing these things, you're in the flesh. And that means that you're in darkness. Okay, 
You were in darkness. That's why it says they cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Become a new creature. When you were that old person, that old creature, you were living after the manner of the Gentiles. So you were like Gentiles in the flesh. This is why the, cir the circumcision called them the uncircumcision. He, they called them Gentiles in the flesh because they were behaving in the manner of the Gentiles. I mean, it's very easy and plain to understand. All right. But the devil want to make it complicated. Real simple. Let's go from there to um. First Peter four. Let's hear what Peter said. First Peter four and one it says, For as much then as a Mashiach, the anointed, have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Right? For he has suffered in the flesh. He that has suffered in the flesh cease from sin, that he should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of the Most High. All right? Because there's a scripture that, that talks about. Um, let me see if I can uh, search it out. It talks about rotting the will of the Gentiles. So like, yeah, I'm tripping. It was right there. <laughs> it was right there. I just had to keep reading. It says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of the Most High. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. And this is what the Gentiles do when we walked in lasciviousness. All right. Uncontrollable lust. Decadence. All right. Lust. Excess of wine. All right, which is all, which um, one of the things that I also just read in Romans 12, right? Revelings, all right, uh, partying till late night, heavy drinking, music playing, overindulging. Usually, uh, in those settings, adultery happens. And in Rome, they was having orgies. All right, they was uh, partying with um, temple harlots in, in the temple. And made the, uh, the the holy place uh, abominable and desolate. It says banquetings and abominable idolatries. All right, this is what the Gentiles do. So our people were, when they was being called out of darkness, this is what they used to do. Let's go to uh, the second chapter. Is uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. And this don't go for all nations. Uh, the Israelites, they're going to be uh, a nation of uh, priests. Pursuant to uh, Exodus 19, 5 through 6. This is just reiter reiterating that. This is just further establishing that the nation of Israel is going to be a uh, priest. So these will have to be Israelites that Peter is addressing. It says, an holy nation, Israel is a holy people, not, not the world. A peculiar people, Israel is that peculiar treasure, that you should shew forth the praise of him who called you out of darkness, right? When you walked in, in when you wrought the will of the uh, Gentiles, uh, when you walked in lasciviousness, lust, excessive wine, revelings, banquetings, abominable idolatries, are right, you a chambering? Okay. You wasn't keeping a Sabbath day. You was eating swine. All right. It says that you should shew forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. All right. You was you used to be, a, you was alienated in enemies in your mind. But now you're being brought back to light. Which in time past were not a people, 
but are now the people of the Most High, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And we already know this is um um alluding to uh the prophecy in Hosea one. All right, well, it's it's and uh, and also Paul reiterated it in um Romans the ninth chapter. All right, though Israel be as a sand of the sea that cannot be measured nor numbered, yet it will be said to them in a place where it was said unto ye, and to thee, you are not my people. There shall be said that you are the sons or the children of the living power. That refers to the nation of Israel. So. Yes, there was going to be a point in time where they were not a people. So, yeah, they were Gentiles in the flesh because they were not living after the manner of the Lord's people, a people who was under a covenant, whose hold to uh, 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 moral, civil laws, dietary laws, ways of conduct. They had lost that. They fell away from that when they were scattered among the heathen. It's real simple, real easy to understand. All right, but he's going to convince you otherwise because he wants to be a part of this so bad. Well, I, I'm sorry, bro. The most I, you know, he he set the, 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 the he said every, he set the standard. He said basically everything is according to his will. And you cannot make yourself a part of something that you're not, you were never a part of. You cannot open up and stretch the covenant out to, to all people when the Lord made it between him and his own people. Well, that's what Christianity did. The Christianity put words in the Most High's mouth. They add, they add to his word. And that's why the false prophet is going to be destroyed. And vocab, he's going to be destroyed. All right? So... You know, and I, and I can keep going, even even down to the circumcision part. All right, you you read that account in uh, Maccabees the first. Let me go to it. Let's let's deal with that. You had a point in time when you had Israelites that literally, under uh, the decree of uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, they actually sold foreskin back onto their um, rods and became uncircumcised. Uh, first Maccabees 1 and verse uh, 11 it says and in those days there went out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many saying let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us for since we departed from them we have had much sorrow so this device pleased them well and certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. And they were even uh, killing women who were caught circumcising their sons and they were hanged the infants. All this is in history. But he, he, he's going to continue to ignore those facts. All right, so by the time the Roman uh, Empire was uh, happened, you asked, you still had Israelites living after that manner. They just wasn't getting circumcised. So then by the time the ministry opened up to the Israelite foreigners, you had men who thought that you would not be able to uh, be reconciled unless you were circumcised after the manner of um, the law of Moses. And that's where you had the decision, you know, the, uh, the dissension come from, where they had to have the councils about it. And, you know, all that came up because you had men who thought that they were better and looked down upon them because they were um, uncircumcised. And you had hypocrites who, although they were, they may have been circumcised in the flesh, but their heart was uncircumcised. They were being hypocrites. And a lot of them was doing it for the outward uh, shoot. And Paul was calling them out on that. Uh, Galatians 6 and verse uh, 12, it says, As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Amashiach. For neither by themselves who are circumcised keep the law, 
they were being hypocrites. So that circumcision didn't have really avail them because they were still there was still iniquity found in these people, even though they may have been Jews outwardly. All right. It says, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. You see that? So that was the circumcision, being hypocrites, acting holier than thou. Rejecting their fellow uh, Israelite brothers and sisters who was living after the manner of heathen at one point, but were being called out of that into the ministry. All right, to the believing of their souls, man, by faith. So that was what was going on. But we know according to Romans 2, when you break a law, you're no different. There's a Romans 2 and 25, it says, for, for circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, meaning if you, are, you offend in one, it's like you offend in, in, in all. Thy circumcision is made uncircumcision, right? Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision doest transgress the law? <laughs> Hypocrite. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Just like these uh, the controversy surrounding the fringe thing you got groups you know other one west groups that push the fringe thing so heavy but they have fast uh the law you pushing the law heavy on others and you yourself ain't doing all the law ain't even uh keeping their passover right so it was the same thing back then all right it says for he is not a jew which is one outwardly Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praises of of is not of men but of the Most High. So that's how you know this is only talking about Israelites, all right? And and they were being accepted, whether they was circumcised or, or uncircumcised. Their, their spirits were, were being circumcised and they were being cleaned up. They were baptized. Coming into the faith. Okay. And they were living in these other lands scattered amongst the heathen. So they were excluded from Israel. But Yahweh Shai, the blood of Yahweh Shai made them nigh. He, he reconciled them and brought them back. That's all this is going into. I don't know how many times we got to deal with this topic, but, you know, we do it for edification's sake. But this guy, you know, he's going he's, he's gonna, to, you know, he's going to double back. He's going to basically stand on his square as far as what he, what he wants to believe. And he's going to try to force that on others. All right. But if you fall by this dude, then, uh... <laughs> The Lord, the Lord pretty much does not want you. You're not of the elect. So anyway, I'm going to end the lesson with that. Lord willing, Zedifon, and give all praise to y'all, Bashem El Shai. And to the next lesson, Shalom.